told us that time once again, Crown and Comments, February 2024. And welcome to yet another episode of Crown and Comments with your host and resident gold wing guru, the one, the only, Cruise Man. Brought to you by Cruise Man's Garage Honda Goldwing Maintenance Videos. Everybody, welcome back to Crown and Comments with Cruise Man, February 2024 edition. I am your illustrious host, Cruise Man, and we have got a lot of stuff to cover today, and I hope you're buckled in and ready to go. For those of you that might be new to this show, I do this about once a month. And even though this is a pretty much a motorcycle focused channel, in fact, it really is a motorcycle focused channel. Once a month, I like to go through and read through all of your comments that you post on my YouTube channel. Sometimes they're on Facebook. Sometimes you send me emails and I just like to have a chance to either answer your questions or just respond in general. And so that was the, that's the general idea behind the show. However, it's kind of morphed into a little bit more of that. I usually split this up into four different categories. The first section, I just kind of introduce myself, tell you a little bit about what's been going on recently, uh, just kind of update you on any old news, new news, whatever. And then in the next segment, I'm going to talk about Cruise Man's garage sale. I'm going to tell you about all the things that I've accumulated over the last couple of years that I'm going to have to be selling off. And then in the third block, I'm going to do my, it's starting to become a monthly thing for me to do some sort of a rant. And uh, may or may not have much to do with motorcycles. I'll try to tie it in, but it doesn't always. Sometimes I just need to vent. So that's going to be that. And then we will get to all of your comments and my reactions. So get ready. I uh, would like to update you real quick on the, and I, I always tell up front, I make notes because my memory is not that good. And I don't want to use a teleprompter. I want this to kind of be sort of spontaneous and uh, I ad lib quite a bit and and if you in case you're wondering where the name crown in comments comes from crown royal is my adult beverage of choice and what I suggest you do is that you watch this in the evening after you're done riding you don't want to be riding motorcycle with alcohol obviously grab your favorite adult beverage whatever that is that could be an alcoholic beverage it might be tea it might be coffee uh, it could be a soft drink, could be water. Is water an adult beverage? I don't know. I guess it could be. Anyway, you do that, you sit back, you relax, you just kind of enjoy the show. Don't take any of this too seriously because I don't. It's my channel and I don't take it seriously. So weather in the Dallas-Fort Worth area has been absolutely unbelievable. We have had record high temperatures in some cases. Today, I think it got up to 88. Robert and I went for a ride on Sunday. It was, I, I believe it got up to 93 degrees before I got home. And this is the end of February. Technically, there have been years where we were still having freezes this time of year. Not this year. We've had a, a really fairly mild winter overall. No problem for me. I, I love that. So right now, Beautiful riding weather. Sometimes it's a little windy, which is not unusual for this part of the country. I also should update you on my Invisalign process. I'm in about week 13 or 14 now. And uh, for the last few shows, uh, my Crown Royal has just been a prop because I've been wearing the aligners uh, while I'm on the show. And I you can't drink anything other than water. But today... Some of the stuff I'm going to talk about, I think, is going to require a little bit of courage. So I went ahead and took the aligners out. I did go to the orthodontist today. They are making one other uh, set of aligners to kind of finish things up. But after that, I think I'm going to be pretty good to go. I'm pretty pleased with the results, actually. Update real quick on merchandise sales. Excellent. Thank you guys for supporting the merchandise. The Shadow Wing and Shadow Bagger, kind of like what I'm wearing now, the cap, and this is the polo shirt, uh, have been extremely extremely popular, whether they're t-shirts, polo shirts, caps, any other of the stuff that has the Shadow Wing on it, the Shadow Bagger. Got a new design coming out in March. 
I wanted to take a second and apologize to some of you because I get a ton of emails. I get a lot of text messages, uh, or not text messages, but messages on Facebook and YouTube. And I get a lot of questions. I mean, when you have maintenance videos for the Goldwing, you do get, it's, it's almost like you become a tech support department. And it's pretty much impossible for me to respond to every email I get. So I just want to apologize to those of you if you've sent me an email and I, you haven't heard back from me. Sometimes your emails get lost. Sometimes I just get distracted or I'm so busy working on other things. I, I don't have a chance to get around to it. And then it gets buried in the hundreds of emails I get every week. I apologize, not to mention the spam I get. So, um, and the tire inflator companies want me to review their tire inflators. I apologize if I don't get back to you or if it takes me a long time to get back to you. I just want you to know I, you know, I appreciate the time you take to write the questions. That's why I have a Facebook group or two Facebook groups, actually. You may want to post those questions on Facebook. My first podcast, I guess it's a podcast. I'm going to call it a video podcast. I may end up broad, you know, doing it as an audio only podcast. Let me know if that's of any interest to you. But I mentioned to you a few, you know, episodes ago that I may be interviewing some industry uh, people who are influencers, movers and shakers in the motorcycle industry. I've got three or four of them lined up, ready to go. I'm going to be doing my first interview is scheduled this Thursday, this coming Thursday, and hopefully we'll have that video out by the first of next week. These are not live podcasts by any stretch. I'm These will be recorded and edited. Hopefully I'll have my first one ready for you to watch uh, the first part of next week. And so if you haven't subscribed already, that would be a good reason to do it. I think you're going to really want to watch this show. I don't want to tell you who my guest is for the first show because I don't want to blow the surprise. Make sure if you haven't done so already, click that subscribe button down below. Don't forget the notification bell because that will let YouTube notify you when I come out with these new videos and you'll be in the first group that gets to see them. Okay, now one thing I am going to ask you is I'm looking for a clever name for this podcast. So if you've got any ideas of what would be a really good, clever, catchy title, a catchy name for Cruise Man's, you know, something besides just Cruise Man's podcast. I want, I want something kind of clever, motorcycle related, Cruise Man related. I don't know. I'll let you guys use your imagination. Put your suggestions in the comments down below. And if I choose your name, if you have the winning name, if I do end up using one of your names and uh, we use it as for the name of the podcast, I will send you a coupon for a free Shadow Wing t-shirt or Shadow Bagger or cap or whatever. We'll come up with something. So anyway, that's it. When we come back, I'm going to talk to you about Cruise Man's Garage Sale. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Man's Crown and Comments, February 2024. Boy, I really, I'm just kind of squeezing this in at the end of the month. It's already the 27th. I barely got it in the month of February, but I did get it in. I've been busy. Okay, so let me talk about Cruise Man's Garage Sale. A lot of you have been asking me, what do I do with all these things I get and these accessories that I review, that I do installation videos? I can't keep everything on my motorcycle. Sometimes manufacturers send me things that they send me multiples of the same thing. Sometimes it's things I test and review, but I, for whatever reason, I don't keep it on my particular bikes. I have a bunch of these things that I they start they start kind of stacking up around here, and I'm running out of room. I just don't have the room to store all these different items. And some of you asked me a couple of months ago, why don't you do a giveaway or a drawing? And as I mentioned before. It's really difficult to do. It's There's all kinds of legal stuff to do with online drawings or YouTube giveaways and drawings, and it kind of falls under that those same laws that govern things like raffles. And it, it, there's all these things you have to make sure you do right, and it just, it just it opens me up to a lot of liability I don't want to deal with. 
So rather than do that, what I do is I, from time to time, will give you the opportunity to purchase some of these items uh, at a very nice discount. Most of these items are brand new. Some of them are brand new in the box and never been opened. Some of them have been opened and shown in videos. Uh, some of them I've installed and maybe ridden a 50 miles, 100 miles to test them out uh, and then put them back in the box. So anyway, without going into too much detail, I've got a lot of stuff that I've gotten from Show Chrome that uh, has been sitting on my shelf that some of you guys may be interested in. Uh, I also have, believe it or not, some GoPro cameras. I have a GoPro 8, a GoPro 10, and a GoPro 12. Uh, as most of you know, I've switched over to the Ace Pro. I'm going to put a link in the description of this video. Rather than me show you all these products and talk about them in the video, I'm just going to put a link to a PDF that I created. It's first come, first serve. Whoever, you know, emails me first and says, I want to buy this. If two of you send me an email, whichever email I get first is the one that's going to get the first shot at it. I only take Venmo and PayPal. I prefer PayPal. And I don't have, basically, you, you do have to pay for it before I ship it out. Now, all the prices on the PDF will include shipping. So I'm picking up the shipping costs. And uh, some of the things I've got to figure out how I'm going to get a box to fit them in. But that's okay. We'll deal with that. So if you're interested in any of these items, some show chrome items, I think I've got a trailer hitch rack. I've got a windshield. I've got some... Uh, chrome parts. I've got some lights, LED light stuff. So if you're interested, look in the description, get the PDF and read through it. And if you're interested, let me know. Okay. When we come back, my rant of the month, get ready, get ready to be triggered. Hey everybody, welcome back to Crown and Comments, February 2023, and I wanted to just, this is my chance to kind of vent. This isn't so much for you as it is for me. <laughs> I just, gives me, this is my, uh, this is my therapy to get these things off my chest. And it gives me a chance to say things to you and get your feedback to make sure I'm not crazy. Am I the only one that's just a little bit bothered by inflation? Because I hear a lot of stuff in the news about it. I'm not buying a lot of this. And I I went to breakfast. This is what set it off. I went to breakfast last week. And in fact, let me look it up real quick because I took a photograph of my ticket that I had for breakfast. Yeah, here it is. I found the ticket, and I'll put it on the screen. I had three eggs and three, I think there's a side of bacon, which is three, three slices of bacon, and coffee. Okay, that sounds pretty reasonable. No toast. I'm not doing the carbs right now because I'm kind of transitioning in. Don't get excited. I'm transitioning into this carnivore diet. It's taken me a while. If you want to know more about that, maybe I'll talk about it in a motor vlog. Let me know in the just in the comments down below if you want to know more about that. You probably could care less or could not care less. Okay, so I ordered three eggs, side of bacon, coffee, fifteen dollars and ninety one cents. Does that seem just a little bit steep? It was $3.50 just for the coffee. It was $6 for three eggs. Now, I can buy a dozen eggs right now for under $3. That's okay. I know it's going to cost me. So by the time I got out of the restaurant with a tip, it was almost $20. For breakfast, for one person. Am I the only one that thinks this is just a little bit crazy? A little bit? Have you gone to McDonald's lately? How are people affording all this stuff? I mean, you could if you took a family of four to McDonald's, it would probably cost you $50 now. I mean, it's outrageous. It's insane. Now, how does this tie into motorcycling? Well, you might say, well, it really doesn't. But it kind of does. Gas prices last week for 87 octane here in Dallas, for in my area, my gas station, 
I filled up last week for 275 per gallon. And uh, today I drove by the same gas station, 309. So that's a 35, a 35 cent increase in three or four days. And we see this kind of fluctuation all the time. And we actually have pretty low price for fuel here. California, I think they're still paying six, seven, eight dollars a gallon, whatever. It's outrageous. So the reason this ties into motorcycles is because I'm getting ready to plan a couple of little road trips for this year. So the cost for me to do a road trip is going to be considerably more expensive than it was, say, four or five years ago, just because of all of this inflation. And the government apparently is not going to stop printing money. You know, a hotel room that was, you know, Maybe $79, $89 at a Holiday Inn Express or a Hampton Inn is now $139, $140, almost double what it was just four years ago. So it's food, hotels, everything's going to be more expensive, fuel. Robert White, some of you know Robert's got a YouTube channel, Robert White Photography. Make sure you check it out. He and I ride together. We have breakfast on Sunday. He just had to get a new air conditioner. I had to get a new air conditioner just a few months ago, about six months ago. I paid $10,450 for a new air conditioner. That's an air conditioner that five or six years ago might have cost, or eight years ago might have cost $5,000. How come you never hear anybody complain about the cost of these appliances? They're outrageous. An air conditioner, and, and not only that, you're lucky if they last 10 years. My mom managed apartments for 20 years, and uh, or more. It may, it may have been more than 20 years. She had 68 units. It was two small apartment complexes. I think in 20 years, I remember her replacing an air conditioner maybe one time. Things used to last longer back then. We lived in a lot of different homes when I grew up. I don't ever remember my mom having to replace an air conditioner, ever. Now, I've, I'm already on my third area. We've lived in this house almost 20 years. Oh, well, no, 20 years, exactly. We're on our third air conditioner in, on one side of the house and our second air conditioner on the other side of the house. And, and my friend who sold me the last air conditioner, and I got a deal, by the way, because I had a friend who I actually begged to come out of retirement to sell me my newest air conditioner, the first company that came out and gave me a quote, it was over $15,000 for the air conditioner that I ended up paying $10,450 for. That's part of what I call the environmental religion tax. Part of the reason these air conditioners are so expensive, now it's not just air conditioners, it's refrigerators, it's water heaters, it's everything, is because the EPA and the government has put so many restrictions and so many regulations on these companies. They have to meet all these standards for emissions, and they've gotten rid of Freon. Now they use some other kind of refrigerant, which some would argue is actually even worse for the environment, but that doesn't matter. The goal is to change things. The goal is to... I'm going to get way off track here and get into a real rant. If I'm not careful, I have to, have to stop myself. But I heard politicians the other day, I'm not going to name names, I'm not going to say who it is, but I am going to say what they said. And they said, we're doing a great job because we've brought inflation down. Okay, now they may have brought it down from what it was two years ago, but it's still up from what it was five years ago. And the problem with inflation is this. And they never talk about this. Inflation is cumulative. So if they say inflation is at 4%, and that's great because two years ago is at 8% or 9% or whatever, and they make it sound like a big victory, well, you're still paying that 9%. That's already padded into the price. So if you go back five years and you take an item that you purchased for $100, if that was 8% inflation that year, that item at the end of the year would cost $108. But the next year, if there's 8% inflation, you're paying 8% of the 108. 
not 8% of the original 100. So now you're up to, what, $116, $117 at the end of the year. And then they say, well, it's now down around 5%, 4%, whatever. Well, let's just say it's 5%. And for the next three years, there's 5% inflation. That original $100 item that you purchased for $100, because this it's compounded, it's cumulative, if those were real numbers, that $100 item now is now $135. So it's 35% more than what you were paying five years ago. And that's why when Ricky and I have been looking to buy a new car, and we have a little Lexus NX SUV, and we bought it uh, in 2020 for, I don't know, I, it, was, it was around $40,000, $41,000. We looked at one the other day, it's $52,000. Well, a $40,000 car in 2019, with those inflation numbers, would now be $54,000. So that, that's about right. It's about a 35 38% increase. And that's why cars are so expensive. That's why everything is so much more. And you're not getting more for the money. It's the same car we had four years ago, five years ago, whatever. It's the same basic vehicle. It's just the price has gone up. And on top of that, now interest rates have gone up. Has your income increased 35% in the last five years? Some of you, maybe it has. Mine has not. But I'm asking you, has your infl has your, is your income keeping up or exceeding inflation? And here's the thing. The 8%, the 5%, all these numbers they tell us, that's all bullshit. Everybody knows it's more than that. It can't be 8%. I've seen things go up a lot more than, well, gasoline. In 2020, I was paying, uh, the, the road trip I took in 2020, I paid $1.69 a gallon here in Dallas-Fort Worth for 87 octane. That same gallon of gas now is, as I said, $3.09. That's more than 35% over the last four years. Actually, that's only been about three and a half years. I'm a little concerned about this, and I see no evidence that it's getting any better. I only see it getting worse, not better. These might be the good old days. That's a scary thought. These might be the good old days. We might look back on 2024 and say, God, I wish we could buy gas for $3.10. Oh, my God, I wish we could buy that Lexus for $54,000. Now it's $75,000. You know what I'm saying? It's really got me concerned. I'm just tired of the misleading information from the media and the politicians who constantly lie about this when they say, oh, inflation is down. Like, that's a good thing. Well, what about the three or four years that we had it at 8% or 10% in some, some say? Some say it was over 10%. Remember, they they use a term. They... they, they uh, control the vocabulary because they have this thing called core inflation. Go Google what core inflation stands for, and they can change that at any time. They can always decide what's part of core inflation. But core inflation does not include things like energy. It doesn't include food. They never include those things as part of what they call core inflation. So when they tell you inflation is down, they're talking about core inflation. They don't ever tell you that, but that's what they mean. This is all part of the same lie where they talk about, I heard this same politician just yesterday say, oh, we're creating all these jobs. We are creating 200,000. But at the same time, you hear all these stories about this company's laying off 2,000 people. This company's laying off 5,000 people. Amazon's laying off people. Walmart's laying off people. All these companies laying off all these people. Yet they've created 200,000 jobs this month. How's that? And yet, and yet the unemployment rate never changes. You'd think if they created two or 300,000 jobs every single month, the unemployment rate would start going down. Let me explain why this, if, if, if you're like me and this confuses you, here's what I think's happening. First of all, they never tell you how many of these jobs that are being created are government jobs. These are people going to work for the government or they're people taking second jobs working for DoorDash or for Uber. 
that and they call that creating a job but it could be the same person working two or three jobs just to make ends meet because of the inflation so i'm not really sure they're creating that many private industry jobs because every time i hear the news in one sense they talk about how many jobs are created in the next sense they talk about all the companies laying people off how can both things be true you tell me in the comments down below maybe you're smarter than i am okay that's my rant for the month of February. Thank you for putting up with it. And when we come back, I'm going to talk about your comments and give you my reactions. Hey everybody, welcome back to Crown and Comments, February 2024. I'm your host, Cruise Man. And now in this section, we're probably finally going to talk about your comments. And I'll give you my reaction or my answers if I have any. And I'm going to start with Matthew, who was commenting on my Honda Goldwing versus the uh, BMW GTL. This is from maybe 18 months ago. And he his comment is, this makes zero, exactly zero sense. Um, he doesn't really elaborate. I'm not exactly sure what he's referring to. Maybe he just means the entire video makes zero sense. I, sometimes people are vague and they don't really tell me, but Matthew, thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Uh, I, I'm assuming I didn't get a thumbs up from you, but anyway. Freddie, and I'm not giving you the whole YouTube name here or Google name. I'm just going to give you, you know, the first part of the name because sometimes people have real long names. Sometimes they have numbers behind them. Okay, Freddie says, uh, on the recall notice... Now, that's the kind of useful and relevant information I'm used to getting from Cruise Man. Thanks so much. Well, thank you, Freddie. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I hope that uh, you I'm glad you found it useful. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Wireless CarPlay connection tips. Uh, this video got a uh, comment from Colonel Clink. I love that name. Colonel Clink. So I have a 2022 Tour and Senna 50S headset, Android Auto, and I've never had connection issues. Doesn't matter what order I turn things on, it just always connects. Well, Colonel Clink, you, I think you're probably in the minority, but you're not alone. I've heard of other people that they never have any issues connecting things. I have had issues in the past. I don't have as many issues as I used to. My Senna Impulse helmet seems to do a little bit better job of connecting than the 50S, but I think once I got the GPS paired to the B channel of my communicators, everything seems to be working better for some reason. I don't know why that would matter, but for some reason, I think it does. Okay, this is from Dimzun something. And this is on my Senna Impulse helmet review. He said, I'm getting one. Australia. I assume that means he lives in Australia and he's getting a helmet. You'll love it. I think you'll enjoy it. I like mine. I'm very happy with it. Eric Purdy says, got to tell you, cruise man, I was one of those guys who thought you should sell your bike after the idiot backed into you. I was just wrong. Uh, me too. You know, my first gut reaction was I probably need to get a new bike. I need to get rid of this bike. They'll never fix it. It'll never run right. It'll never feel the same. And I was wrong. I was wrong. It uh, The repair went fine. They replaced the front fork. Uh, bike runs just like new. I, I, you can't tell anything ever happened to it. So I'm very pleased. Victor Truillo. Now, this is on a video I did quite a while ago, maybe three years ago. 20 things that every Goldwing owner needs to know. It's a great video. And he says, excellent information. Thanks for sharing. Thank you, Victor. I appreciate that. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link up in this video for it and in the, in the comments down below. Make sure you check it out. It's a good video. Okay, this is from Martin. And this is a long message. I can't read the whole thing. The gist of it, this is on the video I did about recently where I recapped my experience I had when I uh, ran over the road debris and cracked the engine case on my 2012 Goldwing. And Martin says, this is a total waste of my time and disrespectful of my time as well. You yammered on about coffee and bagels for Don and Bobby. I chose your YouTube channel for the crack. Anyway, he goes on to explain. 
I think he thought I, that because of the thumbnail that I was referring to a new problem, like something that had just happened. And I was basically recounting a story that happened to me years ago. Um, you know, Martin, uh, moto vlogs are yammering. That's what they are. I mean, I, I and I did talk about the time that I cracked my engine gaze. It wasn't on this gold wing. It was on a previous gold wing. But the reason I retold that story is because when I told the story the first time several years ago, I may have had 10,000 subscribers at that time, and I've got 60,000 now. So there's a lot of people that have come to my channel. A lot of people have bought motorcycles and have just joined YouTube since then. And they've never heard that story. Not many people go back and watch older videos. So from time to time, if I feel like a story is important or valuable or there's good information in it that might help somebody prevent having an accident like that, I will retell the story. So I apologize. But um, now I will say... I don't easily get upset what people say in comments. You can say pretty much anything you want about me. It's not going to hurt my feelings. And I could go into a whole thing on why that's the case. Why am I immune to that sort of uh, problem, uh, issue, of not getting triggered or whatever. That's the new word. Or getting offended. I can't be, no, nothing you could say could offend me. You know, and, and to be fair to Martin, uh, he has posted other positive comments on other videos. So it's not like he just is that he's not a troll that's just trying to, you know, slam me every chance he gets. OK, Robert Kraft says uh, Starbucks sucks. Robert, I agree. I do not like the Starbucks. I don't like dark roast coffee. I've already talked about that. And so thank you for agreeing with me on that. Oh, boy. But here's the opposite. Here's the, the other side of the aisle. Mr. Don Smith. You guys know Don? We have breakfast every week. Yes, Cruise Man. I am a dark coffee fan. I drink it black. And my test for the strength of the coffee to is to stand a spoon upright in the middle of the cup, let it go. And if the spoon stays vertical when I let go, then the coffee is strong enough for me. Don. Okay. Well, there you go. Some people love that dark coffee. dark And I drink my coffee black, too. I don't put cream and sugar and all that crap in it. I'm not that feminine. But uh, I do like, no, I, I've just insulted somebody out there that puts cream and sugar in their coffee, and I didn't mean to do that. So you have to apologize for everything. I didn't mean to hurt someone's feelings. I just do like my coffee black, okay? But I like more of a light or medium roast coffee, not the dark roast. That's just me. Okay. Endeavor trikes. I've never taken my bike. I've never taken any bike to a dealer for repair or recall. I know for certain I would simply replace the pump myself. Now, he's talking about the fuel pump recall from Honda rather than waiting days or weeks for a fix. Okay, the problem with that is a lot of you out there could do this job yourself. I don't think it's going to be that difficult a job. I could do it myself. I'm pretty sure I could replace a fuel pump. It's not that tough. The problem is it's still going to be in the Honda database and maybe even, I don't know if it goes to the National Vehicle Traffic Safety Administration. I don't know if they keep track of it or not. But Honda will as a VIN number that has not been, has an outstanding recall. So if you replace the fuel pump yourself, you're not going to have that VIN number satisfied with Honda. So if somebody goes to buy your motorcycle and they look up that VIN number, they're going to show that it has a recall that's never been dealt with. So that's the only problem with doing it yourself. And like I said in that video, I think this is something that any Honda service tech is going to be able to accomplish. I would wait. I wouldn't be the first one in line to get it done. Let them get a few under their belt so that it's just like muscle memory replacing these fuel pumps. There's no rush. If your fuel pump's working, there's no rush to get it replaced anyway. Okay, let's go to CZ something. Uh, this is on the Garmin XT2 review I did. Why do you need a Garmin? The Goldwing has CarPlay, or has it not? It does have CarPlay, and a lot of people use CarPlay. A lot of people use the built-in navigation. Now, if you live in Australia or some countries, they don't come with navigation. 
Uh, but you could use CarPlay if all you need to do is go to the corner grocery store or go to a Chinese restaurant in a new town or find your way from point A to point B. It's always going to put you on the fastest route. You can create custom routes in CarPlay and create stops, but you're limited to 10 stops per route. It's a little more cumbersome. It's just not, it's not, uh, it's not as good as the Garmin. The Garmin is a better system. Okay, here's an example. You can buy a $10 Timex watch. It's going to keep the same time. It's the same 24 hours a day. Why buy a Rolex? Why buy a, a Tag Hauer? Why buy a, a Rado? When you can get the exact same thing, Maybe not the best example. You could you could ride a motorcycle. You could ride a Harley. You could ride a BMW. You could ride a, a Triumph. You can ride a a, a a Chinese knockoff bike. Why do you ride a Goldwing? Trying to compare the Garmin XT1 or a Garmin XT2, I should say, to a CarPlay, it's the same difference. It's just a more elegant. It's more feature rich. It's more robust than CarPlay or the built-in Honda navigation. That's a video in and of itself. Okay, Scott G says, I wonder if the replacement will fix the problem of some DCT stalling during hard braking to a stop. This is again as the fuel pump recall. I have no way of knowing that yet. I don't think we're going to know until I think the jury's out on that. I don't know if that's because of a fuel pump issue. That could be caused by several different things. I, I don't know. Good question. Aviator says, so you cannot use CarPlay at all without a headset. That's correct. You do have to have a Bluetooth headset. Now, you don't have to have the headset on your helmet. You could buy the cheapest Bluetooth headset, Chinese knockoff, 50 bucks on Amazon. Pair it with your Goldwing. Turn it on when you start the bike. Throw it in your glove box. Maybe you wear a half helmet. <laughs> Maybe you just don't want to have a communicator on your helmet. And as long as that headset is paired to your... Go Maybe even it might work with a pair of AirPods. I've never tried it, but it might. As long as you got something paired with your Goldwing as far as a headset, CarPlay will work. There you go. There's your tip for the day. You're welcome. This is on my jump starter video where I was warning about doing the jump starting and how it could damage your audio system. And American veteran something said his comment was just a bunch of bullshit. Okay, I don't know what what's a bunch of bullshit. Are you saying that an audio system cannot be damaged by jump starting? Are you saying that these electronics are not more sophisticated than they were 20 years ago? What? It, please elaborate. What is a bunch of bullshit? I'd like to know. Uh, now, John Criswell, same video on the engine cr case being cracked. The other guy gave me a hard time on. He said, not boring at all. He liked the video. Good. Thank you. Glad you enjoyed it. And Mike Montefort said, this is on my old video I did on Sirius XM Radio, questioning whether or not it was a scam. He said, I was thinking about getting it until I watched this video. I can't tell you how many people, I bet there's dozens of people that put comments in like that. And for everyone that puts a comment in, there's probably 10 others that didn't comment but had the same reaction. If they just had a way to cancel the service without somebody trying to keep you on the phone for 45 minutes and upselling you and keeping you in their system, I just want to cancel. You should be able to just do it online. You shouldn't have to even talk to anybody on the phone. I'm not going to relitigate that here, but this is evidence. And I think there's even been a lawsuit about this now, but this is evidence that many of these big companies, I'm not talking a few, I'm talking about a lot of these large corporations today and all of government pretty much is all being run by stupid people. These are stupid people, college educated, because you, but the reason I say this is because you can't get that stupid in high school. You, there's not enough time to get that stupid. You have to have an additional four years to get that stupid, to make these kinds of decisions. And so whoever made these decisions at SiriusXM is a stupid person, 
and they should be fired. It's kind of like the Bud Light thing, kind of like the Target thing, kind of like all of the things we hear about nowadays. These are not smart people running these companies. That's going to be a rant for another day. Okay, last comment. I bet you guys are excited about that. This is from Dre. And this was on my inspection uh, video I did where I took the bike in for inspection. He said, I usually take my bike to a dealer. None have ever had me do that stop test. I've only had to have it, I've only had to do a stop test a couple of times, right? To stop within a certain number of feet. Uh, now, I have had dealers where they take the bike for a ride. So maybe they're doing the braking test and not telling me. I don't know. I think this is the last year in Texas that we have to get vehicle inspections, at least on motorcycles. I'm not sure about cars, but I know we don't have to do it on a motorcycle next year. So this may be my last inspection sticker I have to worry about. Or you don't get a sticker anymore, but you do get an inspection. Okay. Whew. That's it. The rant is done. Cruise Man's garage sale is done. Comments are in the bag, in the can. Thanks, guys, for joining me again and putting up with this. If you liked this video, do me a big favor. Give it a thumbs up. That really does help my YouTube rankings. And make sure to keep an eye out for my first video podcast. If you've got an idea for a name, put it in the comments down below. Thanks for joining me today. And remember what I always say, ride often, but ride safe. And my new one that I really like. You don't quit riding motorcycles when you get old. You get old when you quit riding motorcycles. See you next month.